Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sandy Frank's political podcast for a people's revolution against the corporate fascist state. I am your host, Sandy Frank, and today we're going to be talking about a lot of things, but mainly we're going to be talking about uh, well, we're going to be talking about strategy going forward. Uh, so I guess we'll start off with uh, you know, got some got a lot of good comments on a lot of the, a lot of the uh, the past videos. A lot of interesting ideas. People are bringing up a lot of uh, interesting ideas. You know, a lot of good criticism. A lot of a lot of good thoughts. Uh, so I'll address, you know, I was getting some comments for, uh, people, for, you know, supporting the, uh, the DUH, the, the, the organization, uh, working for single payer medic, uh, Medicare, you know, the socialized Medicare. And yeah, there was a big debate in the comments about, uh, about, you know, democratic socialism versus uh, communism or, you know, a certain form of uh, Marxism. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different ideas. And I think a lot of, you know, a big part of the problem, especially in the United States of America, in is the, uh, the corporate smear job done on communist ideas, you know, there's this fallacy that, you know, democratic socialism is, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, communism light or, you know, communism is something that is, you know, when, you know, communism is, uh, the fallacy that communism is somehow comparable to, uh, fascism which is ridiculous, uh, you know, the, the, the great fallacy, the, the ridiculous horseshoe theory that the corporate fascists love to, uh, love to spread this lie about, uh, you know, how corporate fascism is some sort of centrism on, a on the horseshoe and to the left is scary communism and to the right is is fascism and in the, in the center the corporate fascists say that you know they're in this cushy center when you know these are some of the biggest uh, extremists fascists in the world uh, you know so we have the, the ridiculous uh, horseshoe theory bullshit that uh, you know they they think this actually makes any type of sense, but, uh, we, you know, we want to talk about communism and talk about, uh, what it actually means. So some people in the comments were talking about how, uh, you know, democratic socialism is this, is this, um, you know, this, this thing to be aspired to that is is the end all be all of uh, of political ideas. When it, you know, in fact, the the only reason democratic socialism exists is to be basically a bridge between the horrible corporate fascist capitalist state that we have now uh, to bridge unto. Uh, forms of forms of communism and socialism and, and anarchism and libertarianism uh, and you know anarcho communism and anarcho uh, what have you uh, you know so we uh, you know so we want to talk about 
what we actually mean when we talk about uh, communism. You know, of course, you know, democratic socialism has led to things, you know, such as universal education and and uh, and universal health care and and uh, you know the beginning of basic housing and then universal. Uh, you know, uh, you know, ha- your housing for all and basic income. You know, this is what democratic socialism is uh, is working towards and has been able to accomplish uh, in in many many parts of the world. Uh, but the the point of democratic socialism is not just to make some uh, better form of capitalism. You know. The, the point of democratic socialism is to lead us to communism where uh, capitalism and this this ridiculous idea that freedom is accumulating wealth for an employer is so the, the employer can wield his power over you to think that this is in any way freedom or is this will in any way lead us to a a quote-unquote more free society is simply ridiculous. Uh, but we see the, the, the use of democratic socialism is to, uh, you know, lead us uh, to, to have the type of system that our, our Constitution uh, says that, you know, claims that it sets up, which is a democratic republic, and... Uh, you know, democratic socialism is a form of uh, democratic republicanism where, you know, the consensus of the people and the, the consensus of the experts leads to uh, political action, which is correct. That's what we want. But when democratic socialism and de- democratic republicanism is actually put in place, as we see, you know, it's done all over the world where we see these better forms of healthcare and uh, education coming about, uh, the point of uh, growing the you know, democratic socialism is to, is to lead to communism. And what, you know, what do we mean when we talk about communism? Uh, you know, because this word has been so uh, uh, smeared and, 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 and misrepresented all throughout culture by the corporate fascists, but, you know, we, we were talking about the, the collectivization of all, of all resources, you know, to be, to be, uh, used in a way that, that, that supports all people's needs. So communism is basically, uh, a society run by, you know, scientific method and, uh, you know, the scientific process uh, figuring out what is uh, the most efficient and economical ways of uh, of using our resources and of using our our labor and our time. Uh, so communism is really, you know, putting the scientific method at the at the forefront of of our society. And when we talk about uh, the scientific method and science and communism, we're really talking about uh, the, you know, looking for ways to raise all the standards of living in any, in any way possible in our world, which, which capitalism, (laughs) capitalism, of course, doesn't do. It's based on uh, debt accumulation and, and, and uh, the continuation of, uh, of certain uh, systems that uh, you know do nothing but yeah they gain wealth for the top one percent but the systems don't change and they don't improve themselves and they they lead to the lowering of standards of living all around the world uh, but we talk about what communism actually means and communism is a, is a system that is 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 using science to continuously uh, improve upon itself uh, in, in regards to the standards of living, 
and the you know the 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 standards of uh, uh, you know care for our environment and care for other species and 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 uh, raising the the uh, and you know uh, you know learning to use uh, resources as efficiently as possible to you know communism is also you know, a, a system made to cut down on waste. Communism is meant to uh, uh, set up a, a political system that is as economical as, as possible and as efficient as possible. Uh, you know, we look at the Zeitgeist movement, which is you know, very much based on Marxist communist ideas of how to run a. a uh, our, our, a society as efficiently as possible. You know, the Zeitgeist movement and the Z uh, Venus Project are very much based on uh, are very much based on the the use of resources and the, the efficiently using resources. And you know, Zeitgeist and Venus Project, you know, don't call themselves communists for, they don't even call themselves communists, but they don't call themselves communists for the sake of, of, of being communists. They, they come to the understanding that, that communism is the system we need if we, if we want to, you know, continue to exist on the earth because it is the most economical and efficient system. Right, so when we talk about communism, we're talking about having a system of government that, uh, you know, gathers all of the relevant data, it analyzes all the data in a, in a, and, you know, when we, you know, we, we talk about, you know, who is analyzing this data, we're talking about, of course, uh, you know, the experts in the fields, but then also, you know, the, the needs of the people, the needs of the, of the consensus of the people. So we're, we're talking about building a system that's based on science and, and not upon, you know, corporate greed. But this is when we get into the, the smear job that has been, uh, you know, voiced against communism, especially in, in the comments of my videos among people self-described democratic socialists, just proving that, you know, just calling yourself a democratic socialist does not mean you you fucking understand anything about socialism or communism, you know. Uh, we have, uh, you know, these people in the comments are talking about, uh, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're talking about the horseshoe theory. We're talking about quote unquote democratic socialists who have been just as brainwashed as any, any establishment Republican or establishment Democrat into, you know, being fear-mongered about lies about communism. You know, based on people in the corporate media who wouldn't know what communism was if, uh, you know, they actually bothered to take a course in economics, a very basic course. Uh, and, you know, we, we, talk, we talk about that word, you know, economic. What, what does it mean? To, what, what does economic mean? It means... Uh, having a, a system that cuts down on waste, you know, again, going back to the Zeitgeist movement, what Peter Joseph says, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we say we have an economy in, co in under capitalism, under corporate fascist rule, when we actually have an anti-economy, because the quote-unquote economy that we have in the United States is based on waste and the creation of waste. That's the least economic system you could possibly have. One that creates waste and, you know, cannot cut down on waste. In fact, it's just, as time goes by and, ca and uh, the capitalist system is perpetuated and perpetuated, we see that, you know, capitalism continues to uh, create even more and more and more waste. So, when we talk about communism, we're talking about actually having an economy, actually having one, which is a, a, a 
system of resource management that actually uh, manages resource uh, use and uh, in a way that uh, meets people's needs, which is what we're talking about when we talk about communism. We're talking about meeting the needs of the people and meeting the needs of the natural world and the environment uh, for sustainability. So, but again, we just have, you know, just to, just to kind of humble ourselves, you know, just because we call ourselves democratic socialists or socialists or Marxists or communists or anarchists or libertarians or anarcho-communists or whatever, uh, and just because, you know, studies show that those kinds of people who you know, follow these kinds of systems, have higher IQs and are more intelligent than, say, your average quote-unquote liberal or conservative, you know, it, it doesn't mean we know anything either. We're just as brainwashed by the corporate fascist smear job that, you know, labels communism as, 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 as the baddie and as democratic socialism as some, like, sagely center when it's not. Democratic socialism is is the ticket out of the suicidal capitalist system into the the system based on efficiency and the meeting of people's needs and the consideration of a public health and public education and raising standards of living among health and uh, and education and and and, 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 and any, any facet possible is the point of communism is to use science and to use, uh, you know, the, the efficiency of, of scientific systems to raise the standards of everything. And I know, you know, when we talk about, you know, standards of, say, health, you know, of course it's not as objective as a term as, 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 you know, it, it, you know, science, you know, it's, uh, it's not, uh, I mean, it is very objective, but, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, fucking chemistry where you put the sodium and the, the chloride together and you always get salt. We're talking about sociology in a lot of this, and, you know, sociology is, is of course, not an exact science, but it is still a science. So, you know, there's a lot of misinformation about communism. A lot of it. A lot of, a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. You know, people hear the word communism and they think uh, totalitarian uh, dictatorship. And, you know, a lot of quote-unquote communist and Marxist and socialist regimes... <coughs> Uh, in history, of, yes, have, of course, been actual dictatorships and, uh, you know, totalitarian regimes, but, and, uh, but that's not to say that, uh, you know, the, the ideals of, of communism being a, a, a system that, that works to meet the meet the needs of all people and of the earth. You know, it's not to say that. Uh, it's not to say. You know, we. The, you know, this is what we mean when we talk about communism. This is what Marx meant, and, and you know, Lenin meant. And but you know, let's talk about Lenin for a second because, you know, Lenin is of course one of the the big figures that people point to and say, you know, this was a totalitarian dictatorship. In a lot of ways it was. And in, you know, when we talk about Leninism, uh, I mean, we're talking about a lot of things and we've, we've, we've touched on a lot of, uh, uh, principles of Leninism on, on, on these, on these programs. But one characteristic of uh, Leninism is uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat, which is what Lenin Lenin was was really about. Uh, and, you know he, 
you know, Lenin saw that, you know, these revolutions, they're, they're not perfect, you know, setting up a, a completely economical communist system, you know, doesn't always happen overnight, it, it, especially back when Lenin was alive, you know, this was seen as, 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 you know, devil worship to a lot of people, but what, and, you know, just to try to defend Lenin a little bit, uh, you know, he, he, he wanted to set up this, this, uh, vanguard movement of, uh, you know, establishing a form of government that could eventually, uh, be, be transformed into a communist state, which was, uh, a pro, uh, a dictatorship of the proletariat, as in a dictatorship of the people against the corporate fascists, and, you know, of course this, uh, you know, this led to problems, and it led to death, and it led to a lot of things. We're not, we're not denying these things about Lenin and Mao and Stalin, but we're also understanding that, uh, first of all, more people would have been, continued to have been killed if these capitalist feudal systems had been kept in place over, over the time that, you know, people like Lenin and Mao uh, we're coming to power, uh, but the point is that, you know, their, their regimes, you know, did lead to a lot of progress and, you know, have really transformed, uh, and really did transform those parts of the world, especially China. China was basically still in the medieval times before, before uh, the communist revolution in China, but, you know, we want to understand that uh, our, our obligation is to, is to fight for a society that works for all people, and, you know, not to be fear-mongered by corporate fascists who, you know, commit just as great atrocities as, you know, Lenin's people's dictatorship, you know, certainly did, uh, but we, we need to understand that, you know, what Lenin did and what Mao did led to standards of living around the world being raised and led to a lot of transformative progressive change, uh, all throughout the world. So, you know, we want to, we want to be realistic about, uh, the, the change that the, these people were able to, to do and you know uh, of course these major types of uh, societal change uh, of course lead to what happened which was uh, a lot of a lot of uh, resistance from people who had been so brainwashed by corporate fascists, uh, you know, to, to think that, you know, fighting for social policies that will raise the standards of living and, and lead to more free and open societies, you know, to think that, uh, you know, the, these, these, these things that Lenin achieved were impossible, because they were, and a lot of things changed from, uh, what Lenin and Mao and Stalin were able to do, but, of course, we're talking about dialectics, of course, you don't, you can't change the world in the ways that Lenin and Mao, uh, were able to, to change the world without, uh, large conservative, you know, numbers of conservative people who have been brainwashed into keeping the world the same way, you know. So when we talk about, uh, you know, these regimes that the corporate fascists will point to and say, you know, this is what communism is, fucking death and lines for toilet paper, no. I mean, that's also what capitalism is in, in many, 
many, many, many respects. In fact, capitalism has killed way more people than you know revolutionary fighters for progressive change ever killed. But uh, we understand that you know what happened under Lenin is the way that history works. When the people rise up and say that you know we're gonna we're gonna fight for a society that that meets the needs of people, all people, and not just the 1%. And, you're, and when you want to change the world in such a transformative, uh, you know, uh, 180 way, completely turn it around, you're of course going to meet resistance. But as, as Martin Luther King and Malcolm X also understood is we have a an obligation to do this, uh, to change, to, to fight for change, uh, because the system we have is is suicidal and destructive, the capitalist system. So, you know, when people, you know, make these m mistakes about communism, you know, of course they're not completely wrong. Of course people died under Lenin and Stalin and Mao and uh, you know, Castro and Guevara, of course they did, but the point is uh, changing the society, not uh, just fear-mongering about regimes without understanding anything about actual policy. Uh, but, you know, we still, we still see people uh, and again, these are people who call themselves democratic socialists, who obviously do not understand anything about democratic socialism, who think that, again, bullshit horseshoe theory, bullshit centrist theories, uh, bullshit, uh, a lot of bullshit theories, and they, they, they point to people killed under Lenin as if as if that's some sort of point some sort of you know point about political policy you know, communism didn't do that you know communism didn't kill all of those people under Mao you know historical dialectics did the fact that changing the society in that huge of a way uh, creates a lot of uh backlash and of course from the, the poverty and starvation that also came out of those places you know the, the lie that communism does this no it's because uh, you know these those regimes were completely cut off from uh, from the imperialist west who hoarded all the the, the power all the resources and it also came from you know people within those regimes who were you know abusing their power and who were you know authoritarian but authoritarian for uh, corporate fascism who themselves in these regimes uh, withheld the resources from the people which you know by that very logic makes that right-wing authoritarian uh, system, not a, not a left-wing, you know, people's authoritarian uh, system, you know, and that's, you know, we, that's what we've seen happen over the years in Russia and China. Their modern history is that of uh, becoming right-wing and uh, more authoritarian. Uh, you know, we see, you know, China and Russia today are in no way communist states by any means. They are, they are just as corporate fascist, right-wing authoritarian as the United States. And again, we see this, uh, this power race among these superpowers who are nothing but, you know, neo-mercantilists they are, you know, the, 
Russia, China, and the U.S. today are, you know, as laissez-faire as as colonization in the in the 1700s or or, or whatever. But you know, now today, uh, talking about how we move forward to 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 move into a communist state based on. Uh, you know, economical, uh, you know, resource management. How do we, how do we move forward to uh, create a, a, a society that that is based on the the consensus of the people and the consensus of the experts? And you know, for the for the goal of raising raising standards, how do we how do we go about that? That's the question. And it's not, uh, you know, just giving people social programs like single-payer Medicare and then, you know, continuing to have the world based on uh, capitalist ideology. And again, when we talk about having a communist state, we're not talking about uh, restricting people from, you know, practicing... Capitalism, or you know, creating creating uh, business, where we're talking about uh, creating a platform where people are free to do those things, but you know, they don't affect the world economy. They don't affect every other fucking person in the world. You know, we want to create uh, a system where people you know, can, can practice entrepreneurship and, 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 you know, business ethics and, uh, and, and people's ideas of, of capitalism, but, uh, and liberty, but having it on a platform where it doesn't fucking affect anyone else and where everyone else's lives aren't based on whether they can accumulate more as that person. So we're really talking about a form of virtual reality or just some sort of synthetic reality where people can, you know, if they have the will to to live the way that under capitalism, that's fine, but it, it, it cannot affect our, uh, you know, resource-based uh, uh, meeting the needs of all people, communist world economy, and it, you know, these people's, you know, fatuation with accumulating made-up wealth and uh, accumulating made-up prosperity, you know, you can be free to do it, but understand it, it'll be the same thing as playing Grand Theft Auto. You know, it'll exist on a, on a plane that that is set up to, to meet your needs psychologically for, you know, if your if your needs are based on uh, are based on you know, finding meaning in in generating uh, make believe prosperity, then you should be allowed to do it. Uh, you should also be educated about about different ways of, of, of living. And but in no way should your little game of of wealth accumulation have anything to do with anyone else or the livelihoods of anyone else. So, it's just a small uh, view on, 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 on what, we, what we really want to accomplish as socialists. Uh, but, yeah, I... So the... Yeah, I mean, I just got a lot of comments with people really misunderstanding, uh, you know, Marxist ideology, really under- misunderstanding it, while calling themselves democratic socialists. Uh, you know, especially people from the D- DUH, the, you know, the corporate-funded, uh, you know, fight for universal health care, which, uh, you know, can be seen as, uh, you know, something just as dangerous as Occupy Wall Street and being corporately funded. 
you know, this is something that, you know, claims to be about socialism, but is actually run by corporatists who want to spread false ideas about socialism and, and communism and, uh, you know, make it seem like we're on some slippery slope where, you know, we can have social programs to provide people with, with Medi Medicare, but, you know, we should still be operating under a capitalist system that's based on, uh, you know, hierarchy and hurting other people, which is what we want to get away from. Uh, you know, just because the society, as if these countries in Europe are really so progressive, you know, <clears throat> these are really just welfare programs under capitalism. You know, what we want is a an economy that provides for everyone's health in more ways than just, uh, you know, primary care and things like that. But, you know, we want, we want a society that isn't based on a capitalist system that, you know, is, is holds the lives of people into how much make-believe green toilet paper they can accumulate. This is not what we want. We want a society, a, a, you know, a socialist state based on uh, resource management and sustainability, not uh, some make-believe uh, game of capital that is, has, is destroying the world. So beware of the DUH. Beware of uh, corporately run programs that claim to be uh, socialist or democratic socialists that that do nothing but spread lies about socialism and say that, ooh, just a little bit of, uh, ooh, a little sprinkling of socialism and uh, capitalism will take care of the rest. You know, this is a this is a death trap. This is a snake pit. This is the bullshit of, you know, this is the next step of the democratic establishment as, as people uh, mass exited out, out of the democratic establishment uh, program, uh, you know, systems like the DUH will be used to wrangle people back up into the capitalist uh, uh, bullshit scam system. You know, they'll they'll claim to be about all of these socialist ideas, and you know, they they will fight for them, and they might even accomplish it. Uh, you know, I could see single payer Medicare uh, happening in the United States. We need to understand that. You know, the Medicare system is barely socialism. It is a welfare system meant to continue to prop up capitalism. Yeah, it's a great healthcare system, but we want to continue to raise the standards of living and the standards of health using uh, communism and using science and using Marxist ideology to completely transform our, our society from one that... Uh, mainly values uh, wealth accumulation to one that values uh, public health and resource management and, 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 and many other things and you know sustainability over over exponential growth. Growth is really the last thing that we need in a society. We need sustainability mostly. So communism equals sustainability and capitalism equals uh, destructive, unsustainable growth is really what we're talking about. So beware the DUH who will spread lies about communism and say that fucking Medi Medicare for all, yeah, it's a good program. It's it's the best, you know, some of the best programs in the world, these social programs, but they're meant to be continuously uh, uh, built upon to you know, change our world from one where people aren't protected and have to fight each other to, to a system where we are we are we provide for each other and people aren't uh, you know people aren't uh, given value by how much uh, green toilet paper they can accumulate we want people to be valued on the things that they want to be valued on so you know Communism is freedom. Communism is the ability to live a life where, you know, if you want to go get an education and become a, 
a sculptor or a painter or a doctor or an architect. You know, you can do it for free, whenever. You can do whatever you want. And we have a society that, you know, a lot through automation is also what we want to build upon. Where we have a society where, you know, people don't need to work ridiculous hours to to get green toilet paper so they can feed themselves and then call it freedom. It's not freedom. Capitalism is slavery. And communism is freedom. So, yeah, I could go on about this all, all day long, but, uh, all day long. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but tell me what you think about that. Tell me what you think about living in a, a type of society where... Yeah, you know, our our the system we have, you know, creates the sustainability, uh, you know, not through growth but through management, and where, you know, we we can give people the freedom of life to go get an education or go travel the world or go uh, or do what they want, but you know, do so in a way that you know doesn't allow people to just run off to. To dark basement to become heroin addicts because they don't need to work. This is also, you know, people also point to this and say, you know, this is what socialism is, and this is what communism is, and that's ridiculous. That's what capitalism is. Capitalism creates those levels of disparity and uh, addiction. You know, we want to, you know, create a society through, you know, scientific Marxist ideology that. Is ra- when we talk about raising all of the standards of living, we're talking about raising the standards of living among addiction and uh, uh, substance abuse and substance dependence. We're talking about using science to uh, raise these standards of, of, of... And again, we're talking about sociology. It's not an exact science, uh, but we're talking about uh, having our society, society based on scientific ideas that, you know, reduce addiction and reduce poverty and reduce homelessness. So when we talk about communism, we're talking about the scientific method, the Socratic method and, and, and scientific theory, which is, which is not what uh, capitalism is about at all. That's why capitalism creates addiction and capitalism creates, you know, depression and and, all, and, and, and uh, you know, anything that could be seen as, you know, something that people will lie and say is actually something that socialism does, when it doesn't. If you look, if you look at, even if you look at the countries in the world, I'm not saying that anywhere in the world right now is some sort of communist utopia, but you look at the places with single-payer Medicare, and you look at the places with universal education, uh, and you look at the places that have socialism, you see lower rates of addiction, you see lower rates of poverty, you see lower rates, and that's because that's exactly what the system is set up to do, to lower those rates, to raise standards of living. And capitalism doesn't do that. Capitalism is about exponential growth and the suicidal uh, accumulation and, 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 and uh, you know, the resource system of, of hoarding and, and, and uh, you know, people being able to do whatever the hell they want with with those resources without regard for how it affects others and how it affects our environment. Uh, so, you know, I could go on and on about this. I'm, I'm just trying to... I know I'm going to get a lot of comments with, with more and more bullshit from people who don't know anything about socialism but yet still call themselves socialists it's unbelievable people are people are ridiculous they you know people are so contradictory and so hypocritical uh you know people who say uh uh you know people who say you know just just looking at some of my comments as if communism is some big baddie that, you know, we have Bernie Sanders' uh, democratic socialism 
that he's that he's brainwashed this buzzword of so many people as you know some tightrope between the abyss of fascism and communism. It's not true. That's that's a ridiculous thought. Uh, again, democratic socialism is a bridge to communism, which is science and sustainability and raising the standards of living and raising the you know public health and uh, you know sustainable population and uh, you know sustainable resource management. And again, it's not as if you know people who like to wake up every morning and go to a job and and uh, you know scream at people on the telephone and uh, be a business person. It's not like you won't be allowed to do this. You'll be allowed to do whatever the fuck you want, but your little business schemes and your little millionaire CEO affectations will not hurt other people anymore more and will not hurt uh, our environment anymore. So, but I, yeah, I could go on and on. And I'm sure I'll have to when I get a bunch of uh, brainwashed Bernie Sanders lovers and again, I, 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 I campaigned for Bernie and I, I wanted him to be the president. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of good ideas, but, you know, we have people who just use socialism as a buzzword and uh, they're nothing but, you know, uh, they're basically, you know, monarchs just, just trying to follow the, the monarch of uh, Bernie Sanders, the the hero worship of Bernie Sanders who, you know, a bunch of them are very hypocritical and contradictory and we need to, we need to address that, you know, just because you call yourself a quote unquote socialist, socialist, first of all, it doesn't even mean you know anything about socialism and second of all, it doesn't even mean you know anything about politics. So we need to dispel that immediately. Uh, but, uh, you know, but again, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll. I'm sure everything I've just said will be completely discarded by uh, a bunch of uh, know nothings in my comments. But uh, yeah, for the for the end of the show, I guess we'll talk about. I guess we'll talk about. I mean, I don't really want to talk about the Oscars, but we just had the ridiculous moment. The best. Uh, documentary White Helmets uh, uh, the propaganda rag nonsense White Helmets I'm not sure if it was the sh documentary short or the or the documentary feature but you know we had uh, we had uh, corporate fascist propaganda which is uh, you know f the false flag terrorist organization of the of the white helmets who are uh, you know we, we know that Al Qaeda and ISIS are uh, extensions of the US government you know Al Qaeda and ISIS are basically like you know the the same thing as the Department of Homeland Security or or so, they're just an arm of the US imperialist corporate fascist government uh, you know, we, you know, cause you know, terrorism isn't even real terrorism, you know, doesn't even exist except when, uh, U S corporate fascists fund, fund it and create it to, in order to sell war. But, you know, we saw the bullshit white helmets documentary winning, uh, and it's just a, it's just lies and propaganda the entire the entire film. I, I watched it and I wanted to vomit. And I've done a lot of research about uh, and you know it got a lot of backlash from from intelligent people at least in the realm of uh, false flag terrorism and perpetual warfare for profit while lying about Islam. Uh, but, you know, the White Helmets are basically the same thing as Al-Qaeda, meaning that, you know, the White Helmets are just an extension of U.S. destructive foreign policy for, uh, 
for, uh, you know, perpetual warfare, perpetual U.S. imperialist warfare against, uh, people of, innocent people in Muslim nations, uh, and, you know, painting the white helmets as some heroes when, no, they're murdering people and they're killing people and, you know, under the, under the fake guise of terrorism, it's, it's, you know, it's terrorism if terrorism means being funded by the U.S. government and um, uh, serving Barack Obama, you know, Nazi Barack Obama uh, and the Nazi U.S. government is 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 what it means. Uh, but it's just ridiculous that that even happened, and you know, you got a people cheering and happy, you know such a euphemism the the white helmets it's such a nonsense uh idea you know and of course nobody not a lot of people know that much about what's actually happening because the corporate fascist media is so is so uh brainwashing and destructive but uh yeah the white helmets is is a complete uh it's a complete lie you know when you think of the white helmets, just think of false flag terrorism and manufactured crisis to perpetuate the war machine, to perpetuate the trillion dollar industry of, of mur bombing innocent people. And, uh, you know, it's complete bullshit. So, but Debbie Lusignan, the same progressive, just did a really good video, really going into detail about you know, everything about the White Helmets and uh, all their nonsense, all of the, you know, corporate fascist propaganda about, you know, lying about what the organization actually is. And again, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an extension of the U.S. government to, uh, you know, create the image of, of terrorism in these countries being committed by people of these countries which is the lie the terrorism is created by the United States government uh and the you know the the, the world elitist corporate fascist uh state uh but but you know you know shame about Denzel I wish uh I don't even want to talk about the rest of the Academy Awards good god what kind of political uh show is this when we when we take a break to talk about an award show but you know Casey Affleck is a super rapist and uh yeah you know, you know a lot of, a lot of people were criticizing Denzel calling him you know not I mean he's a millionaire actor so of course he's got a lot of problems but I don't know a black guy getting three Oscars. I think that is good in, you know, some respect. Trying to... Considering the the manufactured racial divide by the corporate fascists to, to keep blacks and Latinos in this country and, and in the world, you know, in the lower income uh, bracket. It's good to see blacks and Latinos... Uh, succeed despite that uh you know Mershala uh Ali won Viola Davis that's good uh you know, Moonlight it's, really, it's kind of ridiculous how uh cause not only is was Moonlight uh you know obviously an all black cast but it's also the first LGBT uh themed film to ever win best picture and of course they they shit on the black community they shit on the lgbt community by by mucking it up like that and you know if you ask me kind of a paranoid person i, I you know i think uh that was done on purpose by someone but yeah you know, as if it matters fuck these award shows we need to get away from these award shows and stop worshiping movies and celebrities and start worshipping each other, start worshipping a system of government that can provide for all of us and and 
uh, you know, provide for our environment and provide for, for the public health, including happiness. And we want to make sure everybody is doing the things that they want to be doing. But yeah, that'll be it for now. Uh, please like this video, comment, subscribe, share, retweet, follow, uh, smiley face. I don't fucking know. Uh, but yeah, my name is Sandy Frank and I will see you in the next one.